Okay. Live. Live. Bandwidth for VT Talk is provided by vaporworld.co.uk. Well, hello, good evening, welcome. How are you all? It's Wednesday night. It is, it is. the first of August, you know. It is the day, the day when Team GB won two gold medals. Yes, they did. And did you notice on the news how it was all about what do you call them? Bradley Wiggins, Bradley Wiggins and the two lasses that rode their little pluck out doing yeah. I must I must improve my bust all the way up. Hardly got a mention. And do you know as well that she wasn't even into sports four years ago? So I'm told. Yes. Yes. Yes, so it's amazing. But she found out all about it mm -hmm. and did something about it. Yes. We'll come back to that a little bit later in VT Talk because that's what this is called. And tonight, tonight, does you know, Sav all the way over there, you know, but in between Daz and Sav, the rows between the two dandelions, no they're not ginger are they, <laughs> just orange, the Jones. rows between the two dandelions tonight, we have the oldest git on the planet, Indeed. we have Mr Bob Jones, please mm -hmm. make him welcome during the course of the titles and when we come back we're going to be talking about all manner of things and we might be slagging somebody off, mm -hmm. mightn't we? But we're not mm -hmm. going to say that. We'll not slag her off. No. We will. <laughs> See you after the titles. <laughs> What you don't know is during the titles, Bob ran off to consult his lawyer. <laughs> and he came back all flustered, didn't he? He did, just mm -hmm. a bit. I think he's on a promise. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Is that right, Bobby? On a promise tonight, mate? I, I could be. I could be. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not going to say nothing in case I incriminate myself. So he's on a promise? Yeah. Yeah, he's on a promise. Right, <laughs> fair enough. We know that. That's cool. Um, shall, we, shall we blunder on with the show, do you think? Mm. Let's do exactly that and we'll start with the first bit. Good news, good news, good yeah. news. E-cigarettes are on trial. <laughs> <laughs> well, e-cigarettes are going to be on trial. Mm -hmm. Researchers at the Clinical Trials Research Unit at the University of Auckland are conducting a study of electronic cigarettes, you're not going to like this bit, Bob, to see if they can help smokers to quit. Oh, God. <laughs> Again. Associate Professor Chris Bullen explains, e-cigarettes are battery-operated vaporising devices that are now widely available from malls, internet and supermarkets. Mm. Possibly not in that order. Mm. But we don't know if they actually help smokers to quit and how they compare to nicotine patches. Our study, Ascend, is trying to find answers. Researchers are recruiting around 650 people from Auckland. Not Bishop Auckland, South, just Auckland. Mm. That would be in New Zealand. <laughs> and you it would. All, if, you, if you're watching this in New Zealand, uh, you can call 0508 ASCEND or 0508 272363 to find out whether you're eligible and more about what the study involves. And there's been, there has been one or two comments, as far as I'm aware, on this. Uh, one comment, in fact, uh, which says, I tried an e-cigarette on my journey to quitting smoking, but as I was smoking 35 cigarettes a day, the batteries couldn't keep up. Also, you have to import your own cartridges, because nicotine cartridges are banned in New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you want the ones containing nicotine, and the nicotine, con uh, nicotine delivery is very inconsistent. That aside, nicotine replacement is really a load of BS. <coughs> no idea what that stands for. Mm. I tried the patches so many times that in the end I was buying my own full prices. I was too ashamed to call quit like, so he should be. I've never known anybody to quit and stay quit who used patches and then he starts blithering on about the Allen Carr easy way and, and stuff like that. Which is all interesting, but it's, it's kind of lovely to know that they're going to do that and you'll see why as we go through the show, because the lady is on. But it's there, it's quit straight away, isn't it Bob? That quit word. The quit word. Why do they keep on using the quit word? 
If I wanted to quit using cigarettes, I would have gone on the patches, I would have gone on the gum, lozenges, God knows what else. I wouldn't be still having my nicotine. Well, that's... that's. Don't understand it. I really don't understand. Yes, I know there's people out there that have used them and they have quit smoking everything and they don't even use these things anymore. But for the majority of us, we just want a safer way of getting our nick hit and still being able to enjoy what we're doing. So, you know, I could, this quits thing again. If you look, if you notice it, you go into the supermarkets, the chemists, where are they? They're by the patches. They're by the gums. You know, it's... I just, the, the, they're all over, understand. Bob. Uh, it, it, uh, if you go to Tesco's, you'll get the 10 motive ones at the cigarette kiosk, but you'll get the Nico lights at the pharmacy. And there's another one that's just stuck on the shelf beside the shampoos and, and creams, mm. which is mm. just really weird. Mm. I mean, uh, I don't get it myself. What about you, Darren? Are you, do you use these to quit? No, I don't. And to be honest, and I think that a lot of, lot of people who are vaping will probably be getting tired of the fact that of this, of this topic, you know, that people keep going on about and saying, <clears throat> It's not a case of, it, it, what, what annoys us is, is that these people who, who take it upon themselves to come to these conclusions and do research on it without even researching what it's about in the first place. Oh, there's, there's, there's so much of that happening. You know. That, that people get, go wading into it without doing the research. It is, and, and it, it's happening more and more and more. And it, it's, it's, it's getting to the point where it's annoying and where a lot of, lot of people who are, who are vapors and you know who who see like vaping for what it's worth and they know all about it and they've come to their own conclusion but they haven't come to their own conclusion overnight you know it's been a it's been a long you know some have been doing it two or three maybe four years or more mm -hmm. um, and it's took them until you know that time to come to their own conclusions know what vaping's about but um, these firms or these 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 researchers um, just seem to you know pluck these things out of the air and start saying I mean why do, that's that's another question that I had why 650 people you know what what give them that figure of 650 out of the population in in why just Auckland you know why not the whole country well that it's possibly because they, they, they'll be limited by funding mm. now, um, Bullen, the guy that's involved with that, is one mm. of the good guys. Uh, he's a um, he's teamed up with Mary Logerson for a lot of things, and, mm. and we all love Mary Logerson. Dr. Mary Logerson's yeah. a marvelous man. Yeah. A bit like, bit like Michael Siegel. He's he's yeah. been um, an anti-tobacco campaigner for donkey's ages, but he sees the value in e-cigs, mm. nicotine-containing e-cigs, and he understands what they're about. He's tested them, and, and so on and so forth. But there'll be a limit of funding that they have available mm. to them, and that will. I would imagine, uh, knowing what I know about uh, about Auckland and about the university down there, that they will actually put all of the money that they've got yeah. into the testing, and they've mm -hmm. worked out it's going to cost X per head, mm -hmm. so it'll be, you know, 650 is the number that can deal with yeah. it. They've probably got funded for 700, but yeah. they'll keep a few bob aside just to, to, to sort things mm -hmm. out. That's fine, and that's, that's something that people should bear in mind mm -hmm. for later on. Mm -hmm. Because I think there might be two segments of the show devoted to. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yes. We know what's coming. We do. We do. Don't we, Bob? We do. We do. Is there anything we going don't. on in the chat room, Sav? Yeah, there's a couple of comments come through. Um, Dougie has said, just ask the users. One, you will get your answer, and two, it will save the silly amounts of money to conduct the tests. Mm -hmm. And Moonlit has said, these tests, surveys and studies are always a big waste of money. Mm. Well, yes, it, there certainly would appear to be an awful lot of money being thrown at this kind of thing, and one has to wonder where it all comes from. <laughs> I'll give you free guesses. Well, yeah, we might get to that a bit later on, mightn't we? Yeah. Mm. I'm sorry to keep teasing this, but I am going to tease it for as long as it takes. Yeah. Because this, this, it, it, it's quite serious, actually. But, yeah, um, so that's all going to be trialled out, which will be canny, mm. because the end result of all this trialling will go towards shutting up Barbara Clark. Barbara Clark at West Fargo. 
She posted a couple of weeks ago uh, a piece saying that e-cigs were the, the work of the devil, yes. should be banned, blah, oh, blah, yes. blah, blah, uh -huh. blah. Yeah, remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Steve Johnson, who is the owner of SNG Vapor of Grand Forks, mm. which is in... Is that where Twilight is? Actually, it is. It's Forks, isn't it? Yeah, Grand yeah. Forks, where yeah. Twilight, yeah. Where Twilight You is. would know that. The Collins. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, she says, My thanks to Steve Johnson, owner of SNG Vapor of Grand Forks, for pointing out the safety of water, vegetable glycerin, flavourings, propylene glycol in e-cigarette vapours. The studies he cited look legitimate, look legitimate, <laughs> and I'll concede the point. The inert ingredients in e-cig vapour are scientifically tested and shown to be safe. This is good. Of course, this is not. There is no study that shows what a safe level of nicotine is, and personally, I don't believe there is one. I'm going to come off that shot and onto us now. There is. Mm. If you're watching Barbara Clark in West Fargo, there is there is a known lethal dose. It's called LD50. People need to be aware of what LD50 is. LD50 is the amount, the dose, that will prove fatal to 50% of the population. In other words, it's guaranteed half the people that get that amount of whatever it happens to be will die as a direct result of getting it. Now, the LD50 for nicotine is 60 milligrams mm -hmm. for an adult. For a child, it's substantially less, but for an adult, it's 60 milligrams dosed in one go. Not spread over a day, not spread over a week, but dosed in one go. It's worthwhile understanding that. Now we'll go back to the story. Nicotine, it says, is a poison that has been used as both an insecticide and a herbicide. It's some bees and used as an insecticide. Insecticide. It's not a herbicide because it's it's a herbaceous poison. The mm. herbs use it to poison insects. That's what it's there uh, anyway. Pure nicotine is deadlier than rattlesnake venom. Right. Arsenic <laughs> or strychnine. Right. This stuff is so toxic that spilling a small amount onto your bare skin can be fatal. Right? Mm. None of that is true. No. At all. And finally, it's a powerful carcinogen linked to millions of deaths. Well, she's not meant to be talking about tobacco here. And <laughs> is this really relevant to us? Because I've heard this before, but about tobacco and <laughs> not about. Well, no, what, 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 it would appear that what's happened is she's conflated yeah. all kinds of information from all sorts of places and mm. misinformation. But nowhere is uh, nicotine a carcinogen. In fact, no. it's been noted to be not a carcinogen. Mm -hmm. And it's also been noted to be, how did the MHRA put it, Kirst? A relatively no safe yeah. drug mm. in <laughs> normal dosages. A relatively safe drug. What do you make of what you've just heard, Bob? Well, to be honest with you, I should be dead by now. Um, <laughs> well, <yes. laughs> you I should have died about three or four months ago because I had a bit of a spillage of nicotine that went all over my hand. It wasn't a small amount either. It was around about 20 mil all over my hand. And I just sort of wiped it off, but it kicked you up. Mm. So, you know, this, this little spoonful that she's talking about that's going to kill me i should have been dead a long time ago mm. so the fact wrong there leave it out or i'm a superman and there's no one a superman. you know it's a, oh i don't know darren says you're super you yeah, are super i mean seriously people you ought to see these two in hangouts <laughs> <laughs> it's a comedy show all on its own uh, it's it's him <laughs> him there <laughs> and that one there in the hangouts, honestly, um, uh, no. It's October. This knees up. Yeah. The northeast e smokers mini meat knees up. Mm. If you can get, get because the pair of them will be there. That's yeah. true. We're going Which... to get a room as well, I've been informed. Mm. You what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Which actually reminds me about that uh, knees up, viewers. I need your help. As you know, oh, you've just heard, we're doing a knees up. Knees up. We are. Mother brand. Now, we want to sort out a venue, but before we sort out a venue, we need to know who wants to go. 
That's true. We don't want to have to uh, do it by tickets if we can get away with it. No. But we can't start looking at the venue until we get interested parties. So what I'm going to do is tonight is I'm going to put a thread on the VTTV forum. Of your own accord, if you want to put it on any of the forums, that's absolutely fine. But we need some interest. If you're interested and you want to come, add to the thread. And then we can start to sort out a venue in the northeast. Thank you. Exactly. That was an appeal on behalf of the North East <laughs> East Smokers <laughs> from Darren Johnson. It should, actually, if it's anything like the last one, mm. the last one was, was a marvel to behold. Yeah. Aside from the pulled pork sandwiches and uh, gaseous escapations from the stomach area by certain members of the crew, which shall remain nameless, Tim, um, it was it was a really good night. It was nice to meet up with everybody and see what was going on and stuff like that. And it was all good. It was good crap, wasn't it, Sav? It was an excellent night. It, and the food was brilliant. Mm -hmm. The company was superlative. Mm -hmm. It was delish. It was de lovely. It was de marvellous. It was. It was. I thought it was great. Fabulous. So that's when's that going to be? Um, it at the minute provisionally we're looking at it being around the was it the sixth of October, Sav? Yeah. 6th of October, um, that's a date that we've got planned, but we need to start moving it, so if you're interested, because we need to really start getting things rolling on looking for venues, so that we've got plenty of time to give the the vendor, uh, the venue owner notice. Will there be strippers? No, they'll not. Not coming. <laughs> for you. Only private, love. What, who are you offering um, that to, Bob? Both of you. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at Sam's face! <laughs> I'm frightened to say anything at this point. I didn't know anything about this either, Sam. I'm just as shocked as you are. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. It's going to have one of two effects. If Bob's going to be doing a strip, either everybody's going to turn up or nobody will turn yeah, up. Yeah, that's it. I'll be looking forward to seeing that thread on the forum later. Oh my god. I'm, 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 I hate to have to do this, but I'm going to have to go to adverts right now, and I'm going to nip out into the kitchen and get some brain bleach. <laughs> it's, it's fogging me glasses up, but not in a good way, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Vaporworld.co.uk sponsors conversation on VT Talk. Do you want your cash to scratch a little bit further? Do you want a safer sink? Then you need Safer Sinks, a proud sponsor of Vaportrails.tv. Go to www.safersinks.co.uk, stretch man not included. GG, because you want one. iWeber and iWeber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your AC games. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. iWeber and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. And now back to conversation on VT Talk, sponsored by Vaporworld.co.uk. Yeah, yes, but now, right, yes. There's good news as well as bad news in all of this, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Well, at least I think it's good news. If we let's 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 kind of go to this next one because 
I have the feeling, and I think Bob shares my view on this one, that all of this posturing by Barbara What's Her Name and mm -hmm. folks posting on blogs about poisons and what have you, might have something to do with a certain kind of organisation funding opposition to e cigs And yet we have another kind of organisation doing quite the reverse. Mm. Reynolds. If you've ever heard of Reynolds, they're one of the, uh, the big uh, cigarette companies in the US. They do Camel, I believe. And uh, they are developing new smokeless products. It says, has touted for years its desire to be the tobacco industry's trailblazer for innovative mainstream smokeless products. Blah, 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 blah. All sorts of stuff going on. All easy to read. But Reynolds is also preparing to launch new styles of heated cigarettes similar to Eclipse, which it introduced in 1996 and still sells upon request to wholesalers and retailers. I didn't know they were still available, to be honest. But they are also, it says, preparing within the next six, six months to carve paths in several categories, including vapour, likely electronic cigarettes, mm -hmm. nicotine replacement therapy and nicotine extract product, products such as lozenges. And then there's a whole host of all kinds of information there that's not really uh, germane to e-cigs, but, oh please, there it is. Many consumers have shied away out of safety concerns since most e-cigs are made in China. E-cigs have also drawn opposition from federal and state health officials, we we'll talk about one of them later, mm -hmm. including North Carolina, let's not forget Kentucky, mm -hmm. because of where most are made and there is limited regulatory oversight of their contents. The drawback was removed partially in April when Lorillard Inc. bought blue e-cigs based in Charlotte for $135 million. Mm -hmm. Herzog said a survey of tobacco retailers and wholesalers found several respondents noted Lorillard's purchase of blue cigs lending credibility and legitimacy to the entire category. There are also royalty issues with a Chinese company to address, analysts, analysts said. Analysts? Analysts. <sighs> Herzog expects Reynolds to be the next mover into this growing category, most likely organically but we wouldn't rule out a potential acquisition, she said. Potential targets are Enjoy and 21st Century. Howard, who's from mm -hmm. uh -huh, Reynolds, says it's Reynolds' policy not to comment on any rumours or speculation regarding any possible acquisitions. That yeah. usually means you've got it right, but We've I'm not going to say so. The pipeline, then, yeah. So there's another tobacco company entering the e-cig uh, fray, and mm. I'm beginning to think that uh, the pharmacy companies are running scared. Your take on it, Bob? I, I begin to think the same thing. I said the same thing the other night in a hangar. Mm. But, uh, I'm, I'm not one for conspiracy theories, but um, it does make you wonder how much money pharma has given to all of these associations and whatever that are doing testing on these things that have found them to be safe, or so much safer than a, than a real one. And uh, they're telling them, like, you know, well, here's a few Bob, stick it in your back pocket, keep your mouth shut. Mm. You know? Um, Absolutely. Well, I, I, t I tell you what will scare the pharmacy companies as well. It's just a little bit I didn't read, but I shall highlight it. A lot of people will have heard of big Bill Godshall, uh, or Godshall, depending on how you want to uh, look at it. But he's the executive director of Smoke Free Pennsylvania, and he expects Altria, Reynolds, and other companies will go big mm. with e-cigs. They already have contracts with 500,000 retailers, mm -hmm. ensuring highly desirable shelf displays and many other competitive advantages. Yeah. And I think most people would rather, I, my personal view, I think more people would prefer to use an e-cig than be considered to have a disease and use medical products. What do you reckon, Daz? Well, I said, I think on the Laurel Lord takeover with Blue, and I said, I can see, and I think I was talking to, to Bob about this last night in, in Dougie, and I says, regarding the, toba the tobacco firms, I says, I think that a lot of the tobacco firms will follow suit. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, in, in 
this this kind of like well it doesn't prove me point but it's looking in, in, in that direction but yes i do have to agree with with what everybody's saying in, in regards to it and in, in with pharma and whatnot but i i don't say it is a if, if if the tobacco companies adopt the same philosophy as what lower lot appear to be adopting mm -hmm. then i would embrace it fully because I remember when you did the uh, the video on the the C was it on the CEO the the interview. Oh yes, yeah, the Laura <clears throat> CEO, yes. And what stuck with me was what he said, and I think it was towards the end of the interview. And what he said was that um, they said, "Where do you see the future of V6?" And he says, "I don't see." He says, "I only see it's at the minute is fifteen percent." Yes. And he says, "And I think there's a long, long way to go," which I think is is exciting, and I hope that the other tobacco giants. If they're going to do that, or follow suit, and I honestly think that the UK will pick up on this very soon. That's what I, my personal opinion on it, anyway. Yeah, the thing I, I, I found I'm, interesting. Sorry to interrupt you there, though. Go on there, straight in. Was, um, <clears throat> just before you pointed out about the money consumers part, there's a paragraph about that for, um, from Herzog, who said, "We think that a." E cigs are to tobacco what energy drinks are to beverages. Mm. Um, there are projections of one billion dollars per annual sales within the next few years. Mm. That's not to be sneered at. It's not, is it? No, and and if they get onto it and, and the e cigarette industry starts, you know, becoming a big thing, that one million dollars or a billion dollars is gonna end up as ten billion in a very short space of time. Yeah. The way the pricing on tobacco products is at the moment, it's, it's ridiculous. A lot of people have gone on to e-cigarettes because they can't afford the, 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 the cigarettes, normal cigarettes, tobacco, you know, pipe stuff, whatever. You know, five, six, seven pound a pack is stupid. Mm. It is. So, and, uh, the, the, the bit that annoys a lot of people, and it's annoyed me for donkey's ages, is that the, the government gets most of that. I mean, I've harped on about that a thousand times, so I'm not going to harp on it tonight. But I'm, I'm just looking at Sav, and I'm, I'm seeing intense concentration, which tells me she has comments. I have a comment that's just come in, actually, from uh, Moonlit, who said, I like the comparison with energy drinks. It also has the potential to work regarding how cool they are. Mm. Energy drinks are cooler and edgier than your normal soft drink. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one, one thing I didn't mention here is in this particular paragraph, um, Hertz have also said, in part because there are currently no federal or state excise taxes on products, that means so when they are starting to get tax on them, you know, the more money's going to come in. Or if, yeah. I mean, if. if if and when, because at the moment with it all being speculation, what I would like to see is if the tobacco industries are doing this. In all honesty, what I would like to see is the tobacco industry educating people on um, the difference between tobacco and elect, uh, electronic cigarettes. I don't think they're going to have an option. Mm. I mean, if they want people to buy into e-cigs that possibly haven't heard of them or have been misinformed, which we'll discuss in a little while, um, teasing again, <laughs> teasing, teasing, teasing. If, if, if uh, they're going to have to educate people and mm. they're going to have to have um, the proper information out there, and it's going to be up to the likes of us mm -hmm. and, and, and bloggers and, and YouTubers and God knows who. It's going yeah. to be up to the likes of us to make mm -hmm. sure people have the right information. Yes. And in all honesty, that's why we exist. Mm. We're not, you know, it, it's not kind of rose-coloured glasses. Mm -mm. Um, if I come up with something that tells me this is bad for you, then I'm going to be letting everybody know. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I need to be absolutely sure it's bad for you. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I think I can speak for all of the team when I say that we, we do spend a lot of time reading through every last bit of information yeah. that we can get our hands on to make sure that we have got the right information to pass across mm -hmm. because it's pointless us giving wrong information yeah. you know uh, i don't know what if we don't know we'll say we don't know if we do know we'll tell you mm -hmm. what we do know because nobody in vaping gives wrong information out do they <laughs> well nobody that that understands what e-cigs are about yeah. properly and doesn't have an agenda yeah one such <laughs> one such person that doesn't have an agenda and does understand what e cigs are all about yeah. is Michael Siegel. And Michael 
has blogged again this week and I'm kind of leading into where we're going because mm. we've got to take the last bit last we're, we're down to take it in the middle mm. a WebMD article published yesterday highlights the debate over electronic cigarettes now you see I wasn't really aware that there was a full blown debate but apparently there is mm -hmm. on one side of the debate are public health practitioners who argue that there is no evidence that these products are safer than regular cigarettes and that they may be leading to smoking among youth and former smokers. Mm -hmm. The article highlights this side of the debate as follows. This is an unproven device and we know very little about its long-term health effects, says researcher Jennifer Pearson, PhD, NPH, Cadbury's Dairy Milk and Bar. Yep. She is an investigator at Legacy, an anti-smoking group in Washington DC. We covered this last week. Yeah. We featured this last week. Uh, E-cigarettes are probably less harmful than combustible cigarettes, but we don't have any data to say that and can't talk about long-term effect. Mm -hmm. There are many unknowns and unanswered questions. For example, have they encouraged former smokers to reignite their nicotine addiction? Nicotine addiction. Mm. Are current smokers using them to quit or to circumvent smoke-free indoor air laws? Well, I'm using them to circumvent smoke-free indoor air laws. Yeah. Are they acting as gateway products? Not really. If you went that one with a car, you would get straight through. Mm. There's no gateway about it. <laughs> um, on the other side of the debate, he says, are public health practitioners, like myself, who argue that if one actually takes the time to review the available evidence, one will readily see that there is strong evidence that electronic cigarettes are much safer than any regular cigarettes, mm -hmm. that youth are not taking up vaping in any significant numbers, mm. and that the primary use of these products is among smokers who are trying to quit <coughs> or cut down on the amount of the harmful cigarettes they are smoking. In fact, a clinical trial demonstrated that 54% of smokers who were not motivated to quit were able to cut down by at least half on their smoking with the help of electronic cigarettes. Mm. And I'm going to leave that there just for the second because there's more to come on that one. But again, I know we asked this question last week and I'm going to keep on asking it. I didn't start using e cigs to quit smoking. Did you? No. No. Did you, Bob? No, not so. Did you, Sav? No. No, and I dare bet there's nobody in the chat room started on e-cigs to pack in smoking. And I mean pack in, pack in. Nothing. No nicotine. I don't suppose there'll be many that did. And, and as we were saying earlier on, Bob, there does seem to be quite a, um, an American thing that they, they say the, the, the quit word looms large. It what, does. Massive. Know, massive. It's big. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's about harm reduction. Yeah. It's not about getting rid of nicotine out of your life. It's about getting rid of the carcinogens out of your life. Yeah. That's what it's about. And I suppose, you know, you're quitting smoking tobacco. Mm -hmm. You're quitting killing yourself. Mm -hmm. But you're not quitting doing what you did before. You're just doing it a different way. That's, yeah. the, that's, that's the view I take on it. However, before we run to the adverts, there is a woman that doesn't see it that way. Let me introduce to you Dr. Ellen Harm of the University of Kentucky. Now this is a little bit quiet, but do have a listen. This is supposed to be a proper educated doctory type woman yeah. that knows all sorts of things about everything and yeah. is properly trained and stuff like that. Has she been misinformed? Is she spouting what was that? Those two letters? BS was it, Bob? Yeah. I've got no like idea that. what that's. We'll call it fertilizer. Fertiliser, yes, mm. that comes from the nether mm. regions of the uh, male of the bovine species. Mm. Yeah, have a listen to this. This was on the telly, this was. We're glad you're with us today. It's a growing trend. Many people who are trying to quit smoking are now turning to the use of electronic cigarettes. We're joined today by Dr. Ellen Hahn, professor in the UK College of Nursing and director of the Kentucky Center for Smoke-Free Policy. Dr. Hahn, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Okay, how do these cigarettes work, the electronic cigarettes, and do they work well in this area? Actually, the FDA does not approve electronic cigarettes as a way to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. um, the industry and advocates supporting e-cigarettes would like you to think so, and you do hear people claim that they have success. The bottom line is, though, that an electronic cigarette is really not a quit aid. It's not a safe alternative to cigarettes. 
and we recommend that people use um, a combination of behavioral support and medications that are approved by the FDA to help them quit. The bottom line is though they really need to talk to a provider about help because it's very difficult addiction to quit. Well, why do you think people are turning to these? Do you think they're looking at it and thinking it might be a quicker fix instead of you know really having to work at it? Well, there's a lot of myth and misperception and confusion about the product because we've had this dramatic increase in advertising and marketing of the mm -hmm. product. The FDA um, decided after a, a court case that F, uh, the e-cigarettes would be regulated as a tobacco product and not as a quit aid. So the industry is not allowed to make therapeutic claims, but yet people are, are confused. They're using social media and other ways of advertising the product, and so people are confused about it. Um, it is not a safe alternative. Um, the cartridge and the vapor actually have a lot of very toxic chemicals as well as high, high levels of nicotine in them. Okay, it sounds like if people were thinking of this, the answer is no. I know that UK has put a lot of research into this area. Where should people get started if they want to quit? What do they need to do? What's the first step? There's a lot known about what's effective in quitting. Um, I would definitely call UK Healthcare. We have a mm -hmm. certified tobacco treatment specialist, Audrey Darville, who is uh, very knowledgeable and can help you quit. The health department has programs, certainly. You can get online at www.smokefree.gov. Um, there are lots of opportunities uh, and ask your provider because a lot of health care providers in Kentucky know what to tell you so don't do it alone now, it's certainly difficult. easier if you have some support right absolutely yes right. well thank you very much we Thanks. appreciate that information thank you yes Ooh. echo the train now standing on platform five six seven eight nine and ten has come in sideways please do not be alarmed that woman Right. Yes. She is funded by do we do we have the list anywhere handy? Bob, do you can you remember where she's from? It was a wiki, wasn't it? It was it was ridiculous. Yeah. Um she is funded by um Legacy. That's the the people that, yes. that Jennifer Pearson was, was writing for. They don't like A six. She's funded by two pharmaceutical companies. She's funded by Smoke Free Kentucky. Uh, or the UK, by the way, is the University of Kentucky. It's got nothing to do with England, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, or any of that. Mm. Um, she gets, we reckon, we, we, we totted this up earlier on, she's on a million dollars to tell you that e-cigs are bad for you. Yeah. She's being paid a million dollars to tell you that e-cigs are bad for you. Mm -hmm. We get paid the square root of bugger all to tell you she's telling porky pies. She's misinformed. She does not know what she's talking about. She is an ideological convert to the mission of the prevent prevention of e-cigs. Totally signed up to WHO. There you go. And I'll, I'm imagining that's generated a few comments. Am I right, Sav? There's a lot of comments, but there's not many that I can read out. Can you self bleep? Um, I'll give you the gist of it. She is talking a lot of rubbish. Uh -huh. It's pretty much the gist of what the chat has come to the conclusion of. Um, I think my favourite comment was by Moonlit that summed it up nicely, and he said, I chew my whistle tip at her. Mm. <laughs> Say that one again. I chew my whistle tip at her. <laughs> I like that. It's I like just, that. It's just pretty much like I pick my nose in your general direction. Exactly. Yes. And that was the common consensus from chat. I, 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 think, I think chat has been remarkably sensible on that yes. one. Mm -hmm. um, I have to admit, I, I see lots and lots of stuff like that. And it's beginning to boil my mm. blood. For one, Well, it's not what I was going to say, but you know what I mean. Mm. I, it just... What what do they think they're on? You know, you've got, as we saw right at the top of the show, we've got Auckland, mm. Bullen, Logerson, people like that, mm. who have recognised the value, understand that e-cigs, it doesn't matter how you, how you characterise them, they're a thousand times at least less dangerous or less risky than yes. tobacco or cigarettes. 
that's just the way it is that's fact they've worked it out they've done the measurement mm -hmm. we know that on august the 25th there's going to be uh, a paper published that will tell you exactly what's going on with e-cigs what's in the the exhaled vapor mm. and it'll give you figures down mm. to the the percent there's already been a study that we that we covered last week mm. that has what the percentages of all the various different bits and bobs yes. that are in there and all of them are safer and michael siegel's covered all of that mm -hmm. it appears to me and i don't know whether i'm right or i'm wrong but i think that finally because lorillard and now reynolds have become involved and we know that Altria, the people behind Mar Marlborough, are also looking to become involved one way or another. I think Big Pharma is running scared. Yeah. That is exactly what I think. I think they've now realised, hang on a minute, if they're predicting the market to be a billion dollars per annum in the medium term mm. and growing beyond that, that's a billion dollars that pharma ain't going to get. Yes. Because the, 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 the question was asked, which, which would you, what was the difference between an e-cig and a patch? You kind of stick a battery in a patch, there's no vapour out of it. No. I mean, the, 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 the least. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm flying for four and a half hours tomorrow. Mm. I will take an e-cig. Yeah. I will also, if I have to, if I feel the need, I'll go and buy one of those plastic tampons if it looks as though there's going to be bother on the plane. Yeah. I've, I might have one anyway, just in case. Mm. But there's no way on the face of this planet would I stick a patch on. No. It's just not going to happen. And I don't think many folks would. I mean, the, the dire things, absolutely dire things. I've never known them to work. And it's, it's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So have any more comments before I take this break? Just have another quick comment. This is coming from Moonlit, and he said the weight of the cigarette companies behind e cigs could definitely come in handy. Mm. They're not going to want to lose out. Yeah, I would agree a hundred percent with that. I think if uh, if the cigarette companies, tobacco companies, get involved mm. and start turning e cigs out, I mean they've got an outlet for their tobacco mm. because that's where the nicotine is going to come from. It may take a little longer to extract the nicotine and what have you, but the sales potential mm. is remarkable i mean and you know when we were talking about another word for vaping mm. following the molly wood thing mm. and we came up with synthalating <laughs> af after star trek and synth but si think about yeah. synthahol yeah you know in star trek i know it's it's not real and, and stuff like that mm. I'm, I'm told that i don't believe it um but yeah. if you think about it you know give it another 20 years mm. and i can see tobacco tobacco being out of the window and e-cigs being where it's at well that's that's what i think i said a couple of weeks ago on this as well because um if you go right back to like um um things like the industrial age mm. now you've got the digital age and does this or does this not really tie in with the digital age you know in the way that things are going like paper free you know this that and the other mm -hmm. and you know electronic Yes. And the same with electronic cigarettes. And I think that, you know, it does go, it, it does go hand in hand. And, and for so, not just for the electronic side, but for so many reasons, you know. And I think it's part of the evolution. I think on the tobacco industry side that it'll mould, it'll mould vaping. And it, it, it'll make a massive change, mm. you know, from what we know it now. I, I really, really think that. I, I think mm. you're not wrong. I think yeah. you know, and and I know that it, certainly in the UK there's a greater acceptance of e-cigs by the medical community, as Bob found out. Mm. When because you, you 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 were in hospital earlier on, weren't you? You don't mind me sharing that with the world, do you? No, 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 not at all. I had to go in for a minor op on Thursday last week, and um, I took in the mini touch wood with me, and I was doing a little bit of stealth vaping, and one of the um, Nurses saw what I was doing, asked what it was. So I told her, she went, Oh, that's nice, that's cute. Um, you know, so he was explaining things to her. And then another nurse came up and then she, they walked out. And then they brought another one in. I, so I said, Well, is it okay to, to vape in here? Because I was in a ward with four or five others at the time. And I said, Yeah, well, why not? It's, it's not smoke. It's, um, you can do it legally. So I, I sort of I wasn't blowing plumes of smoke out, but uh, all vapor out. I was um, being sensible, but you know, and there was an old boy sitting across from me. He says, uh, "What's that you got there, son?" So I said, uh, 
told him what it was. So oh, I never smoked. He said, I won't eat one. I said, would you bloody well ask me then? <laughs> <laughs> no good pieces. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I'm right in thinking as well that uh, the nurses did praise your mini Woody. They did. They did. <laughs> my, win, my mini Woody had lots of strokes that day. <laughs> Got well polished. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sav, any more comments? Because otherwise, I think this is probably a good point to take a break. Got a couple more. Um, Evil Woman said you would think tobacco companies would welcome a product they could sell and make more money than the government on, mm -hmm. which Moonlit follows with. With some of them already on the bandwagon, you can be sure others won't be far behind. And he agrees with Daz, it does feel era appropriate to be using e mm. We're probably a little bit late, actually. Yeah, we we'll probably are. We we'll probably are. Just, just to add one thing, if, if the big tobacco companies don't get in on this, they're going to end up losing out big time in the end. Because the way the nanny states around the world are forcing you to pay... It's so much more money for the tobacco. You stigmatise your nose as a leper. You know, you're not welcome anyway. You smell of tobacco, smoke, people stick their nose. Oh, you know, it's right, it's horrible. Mm. Um, they're going to want to get in on the action. They're going to want their slice, aren't they? Yeah. So they're going to be stupid not to get in on it. It's, it's a no-brainer at the end mm. of the day. And as you said, though, big farmer, I started to run scared. And this is why you're getting people like that. Don't be woman. Spouting fertilizer like that. No wonder people confuse if they sit and check on us. Absolutely. We'll take a break there, and when we come back, we'll take a look at Michael Siegel's take yeah. on Dr. Ellen Hahn. <laughs> yes. And then I'll tell you what's going to be happening over the next month. We'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Vaporworld.co.uk sponsors conversation on VT Talk. And now back to conversation on VT Talk, sponsored by Vaporworld.co.uk. During the course of the adverts, Sav was telling me she's been inundated, haven't you, Sav? I have, yes. The chat have been absolutely brilliant with follow-up links um, to interviews that were conducted after that with uh, vendors and vapors and letters that have been sent and all sorts so I think we need to put these up somewhere and get everyone to see them and get talking about it. Mm. Absolutely well we'll, we'll start a thread um, on the VTTV forum um, forum.vapertrails.tv uh, we'll put a thread up on there if you can if you post all the links and what have you into there let's Let's get. And I, I mean, let's go straight to what Michael Siegel's had to say about it because I think he's he's seen it the same way that we've been seeing it. Yeah. Got no sound, Dave. Got no sound. Apologies. 
I do apologise for that. That was a, a slight technical hinge. Right, where was I? You'll have read the first big bit in bold anyway. In what now seems almost like a crusade, the Kentucky Centre for Smoke-Free Policy is out to get electronic cigarettes and to protect smoking cessation drugs from any possible competition from these new products. In the most recent salvo, a representative of the centre appeared on television to discourage smokers from using e-cigs in an attempt to quit smoking. And we've just seen what that was all about and the quote is there. Um, Michael's take on it goes, is it the people, i.e. smokers, mm. who are really confused, or is it the Kentucky Centre for Smoke-Free Policy? There is abundant evidence that literally thousands, if not tens of thousands, of electronic cigarette users have successfully used these products to either quit smoking or to cut down substantially on the amount that they smoke. A clinical trial has demonstrated that among smokers who were not motivated to quit, 54% were able to quit completely or to cut down by at least half on the amount they smoke. Thus, it's quite misleading to state that the electronic cigarette is not a quit aid. For many smokers, it is indeed a quit aid. And it goes on. You, you really should read it. Um, it goes on to say, Ignoring the anecdotal evidence may not be all that troubling, but ignoring the clinical trial evidence is gravely problematic. The advice from the Kentucky Centre for Smoke-Free Policy is irresponsible because it asserts that many electronic cigarette users who have quit successfully using these devices should continue discontinue their use and take their chances with NRT or Chantix, which is Champix. Yeah. Here. But because a large proportion of these ex-smokers are vaping specifically because they tried NRT or Chantix and failed, this, is ad this advice is tantamount to urging these ex-smokers to return to cigarette smoking. Mm. It is difficult to imagine more irresponsible medical advice. Now, that piece of information says it it says absolutely everything about it. Mm. A year ago, we would have said it was the tobacco companies trying to drag yeah. people back to ciggies. And it's not. It's the pharma companies. Mm. Because they've got a lovely, never-ending circle. I was just thinking that. You, if you go on to patches, chantix, lozenges, gums, plastic tampons, whatever, you have got a 90 six percent chance of failure at 12 months yeah those figures if, if it's 90 percent let's say it's 90 percent let's mm. be generous okay you've got a 10 percent chance of success and a 90 percent chance of failure the pharmacy companies know this they know this they know that by the time 12 months is gone the likelihood is you'll be sparking a billionaire chup cracking the marlboros out yeah getting the camels out whatever mm. they know that that's the case and they know that your family and your friends and the people that you work with and everywhere that you go be going you are naughty boy you should not be doing that you are you are polluting the atmosphere mm. and, and all the rest of this kind of crap and they know you'll have another go mm. and you'll be on the champ X for another three months mm. and you'll be on nrt for another three months so they haven't just had one bite of the cherry. Yeah. They didn't help you quit. They helped you try to quit, mm. but they didn't help you quit. Then they have a second go. And 12 months after that, 90% mm. of those people are still going to go back to the fags. Exactly. And they'll have another go. And they'll have another go. With e-cigs, 54% of people who did not want to pack in smoking, stop smoking tobacco cigarettes. Yes. The figures are there in black and white. It's been clinically tested and trialled. These are people that did not want to pack in smoking. In, in a lot of the clinical trials when they look at uh, smoking cessation devices, they are looking for people that want to quit. Mm -hmm. And if you want to quit, you'll quit. Yeah. If you want to, if you really want to. We were saying that last week. Yeah. If you want to quit, you will quit. So all of those <coughs> trials are skewed. They're yes. skewed by the people that are on the trials. Here... They've got hold of people that don't want to pack in mm -hmm. and said, there you are, have a box mod. Well, probably not. No. Uh, with a big button. Um, <laughs> the, there you are, there's an e-cig, here's some juice or some cartridges or some cartomizers or whatever it is. Mm. There you are, bugger off and see what happens. And when they've come back after a, whatever period of time, 
folks are saying exactly the same as we do. Yes. They prefer e-cigs to mm -hmm. tobacco cigs. Yes. And they stay on them. They're off the tobacco. So all of the evils and harms that tobacco do are out of the window with exactly. e-cigs. And then you get a complete plonker, in my opinion, based on what I've read that she said and, and what she's been writing here, there and everywhere, coming on and telling everybody that's been successful like mm -hmm. that, no, 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 you should go back to cigarettes. Mm. It'll, I suppose in a way as well that, given on what, what she said, um, it'll be interesting to keep an eye to see what um, the vaping community has to respond, not as in a medical profession, but just genuine vapors who will naturally be in uproar about it, mm -hmm. I would imagine, and to see what their comeback is on it, because I would imagine that a fair few will not stay silent over the issue. And I think that the masses will speak for themselves. I, in, in a, I certainly hope yeah. so. What's your take on it, Bob? Five or six years ago, I wanted to give up smoking. Literally wanted to give up smoking. I was determined to give up. My kids were on at me. And I said, right, fair enough, I'll give it a go. I lasted three months. I was offered um, Champix, is it? Yeah. yeah. But the, the nurse who offered it to me, she turned around and she said, I don't advise you to take it. If you want to, to quit, then have the, the patches, the 24-hour, 36-monogram patches, whatever they were. Mm. So I tried them three months. Me and my wife tried them three months. In that three months, I was still smoking while I had the patches on. Um, I was climbing the walls, I was angry, ceiling, all kinds of things. I was angry, I was nasty, mm. I was shouting at the girls all the time. I was shouting at the wife, she was shouting at me. And after three months, I said, enough's enough. Enough's mm. enough. Six months ago, I picked up an electronic cigarette for the second time. And I haven't had a cigarette since. That's, that's all you need to say, isn't it? We'll give the last word on this subject to chat, Sav. Yeah, there's a few comments coming through. Uh, Midge Dog has said about that article, he's a good lad, spot on. Uh, Yansu Finn says, voice of reason and all this mess. Moonlit has said that 54% might be higher if everybody had a device suitable for their needs. Yeah. Getting a 60 day smoker on an e lights type device is not going to be much help to them. Mm -hmm. no. And Midge Dog has just said, I always failed at the three month point, whatever I tried when I attempted to give up with the NRT. He mm. hated it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And mm. we'll, we'll, chat's had the last word. And I don't think we can top that. No. Now, just to fill you in on what's going on. Tomorrow, I fly away. And I shall be away until the 27th. I arrive back at stupid o'clock in the morning on the 27th of August. So, um, until then, VT Talk will be off the air. However, the Hairs Hour will continue. We've been beavering away in the background. And there are shows already selected, done, uploaded and ready to go for tomorrow night. The week after that, and then the week after that, we've got a very, very special guest doing the show. You will not want to miss this. It's a, a, amazing. The, the guy's initials are BT. I'm not going to say any more than that, but you will love what he's doing. He's going to make Gary Dibley look like a beginner. It's going to be a brilliant show. I've already sat and watched it, and I, I'm, I'm not going to give it any more trail than that. But you really do need to be there. So here's how we'll continue. VT Talk will be back in September, I think is the easiest way to put it. So I think it's the last Wednesday in, in August, potentially. Mm. Um, so that's pretty much where we are for yes. the moment. Um, thanks to May everybody. Interrupt. Which, what, what? May I interrupt? Go on then. Because we had no sound after the, this, the last lot of adverts or the, the last show, whatever it was, it was on. Um, people didn't hear what you were saying about putting a link in the forums about the links that uh, Sav was getting to, on the follow up. The, um, oh, for the chat, from the chat, yeah, for the links the of the video. Ah, right, there. yes, yes, yeah. sorry about that. There will be a thread on the on the VTT forum, mm -hmm. the VTTV forum. That's forum.vtt. Christ. Forum.vapertrails.tv. And I see I need to start that away. Um, I need to say a great big thank you to Sav. Um, in fact, a great big thank you to Sav and Kat 
for the last 18 months of VT Talk. You've been stars and helped me through no, no end at all. Thanks to Bob for coming in and being with us tonight. Thanks also mm -hmm. to you, Darren, no for, uh, for coming along. And this is going to be an ongoing thing. It is, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to all of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for watching. Do download the podcasts. Keep on tuning in. I'll see you when I get back from holiday. Until then. Bye. Bye. VT Talk was sponsored by Vaporworld, introducing the straight-up range of e-liquid from the USA containing real tobacco extracts.